In addition to the 14 dead from last Friday's massacre, four others were wounded. One is hailed a hero. Wounded and shot, she called 911 for help from under a desk. 61-year-old Shirley DeLucia of Conklin is recovering at Wilson Hospital tonight. She was shot in the abdomen and pretended to be dead. When we spoke with her family earlier this week, they said she has not talked much about the shootings. DeLucia stayed on the phone with police for about 40 minutes, which helped them coordinate SWAT team entry. We're certainly relieved that she's alive. Um, and we're proud, of course, that she was able to do what she did. I can't imagine being in that position and having to uh, go through not only the pain, but the uh, mental anguish that had to be going on at the time. Bassett says his sister's humbled by all the praise for her actions. Three other people were also wounded and survived the shootings. 37 other people inside the Civic Association escaped the rampage physically unharmed. Some of those survivors are sharing their stories. Action News reporter Julianne Sweeney spoke to some of them. Very quickly, five bangs, bang, 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 again, again. And everyone looked at each other and we just ran. Teacher Priscilla Pease recalls the moment Jibberly Wong opened fire inside the ACA. Pease was teaching English in a basement classroom. She and her students ran and hid in a nearby boiler room. This 19 year old put his back to the door to block out the gunman. Save the people, you know? Me, no problem. The sound of gunshots stopped within minutes followed by silence. Afraid to make noise, the class gestured to communicate with one another. 26 people stayed in the boiler room for more than three hours. While they spoke to police by phone, they had no idea what was unfolding upstairs. I never I see to my family, it was terrible in your mind. One of our teachers, she was so brave, I think. She, she get, build their confidences and uh, uh, she did a lot. 41-year-old Wong killed 13 people and himself. These survivors say they did not know the former ACA student. Still, they're left to search for answers. Everyone says, why did this man do it? And we just, you know, there's no answer. There is no answer, at least not one most rational people can understand. And as we try to grasp the enormity of this tragedy, so many others are trying to help the victims, their families and friends, and the community. Binghamton Mayor Matt Ryan shares his thoughts. Are you concerned that from now on, when people say they're from Binghamton, that others will say, oh yeah, that's the place where that crazy guy killed all those people? You know, I don't think that's gonna be the response because we, I think uh, all the officials did a great job of uh, telling the story about Binghamton, about which way EJ, all the things that uh, led to this community being strong because of its immigrant roots and its diversity. So I, I just don't think that's gonna happen. Will it change the city in any, any way or the, the perception of the city? I think we'll be stronger. I think we'll recognize some things. Uh, you know, I was at a bunch of functions in the last few days, and as strong as our relationships are with the immigrant community, we can reach out more. I think I've learned that in the last few days. We'll be able to for instance, if somebody's having a mental health issue in the immigrant community, we now have to think of ways to identify those issues in a more effective way. I think everybody would probably agree with that. So let's, you know, I think we can do better. We'll, we're already have done great with um, our relationships with the immigrant population and our diversity, but we can do better. So what are your thoughts today, now, one week later? You know, it's going to a bunch of funerals and wakes and things like that. It's the human face of the whole tragedy and seeing the uh, kids that have been lost their uh, mother today, the Vietnamese mm -hmm. uh, family from Johnson City, and seeing um, the woman up in uh, the gentleman who lost his wife of not too long ago mm -hmm. from Green. That's just uh, really makes it hard, harder in some ways because now the human face is being put on this. But um, again, I, I'm so proud of the community, all the responders, the hospitals, the 911 responders, the police, the fire. Everybody did such a great job in this, and it's still ongoing. All the victims, the Family Assistance Center that's been set up. There's a lot of work to do to make sure that we help those, the first pr priority is help those individuals who have been affected by this tragedy, and then to build a stronger network for all of our immigrant population. Bingham to Mayor Matt Ryan. People are trying to heal by remembering the victims.
with services, memorials, and vigils. We'll revisit some of them, including this one just today. Stay with us. One week to the day after 13 people were gunned down, church bells toll. Church bells today ring 14 times. 13 for the victims killed by the gunman at the American Civic Association and one for the gunman himself. All churches were asked to ring the bells, especially those in downtown Binghamton. The bells tolled at 1030 this morning. That's about the time the victims were killed last Friday when Jeverly Wong started shooting and then took his own life. And after the bells tolled, a memorial service and procession began to lead people toward healing. Action News reporter Eric Burling tells us the march is a call for peace and forgiveness. This bell sounds 14 times on the steps of the Broome County Courthouse, once for each person who died inside the American Civic Association. We will continue to honor those who have lost their lives by building an even deeper commitment to the values so embodied in the American Civic Association. A moment of silence, a time for families, friends, and community members to place those who died in their thoughts and in their hearts. The 14 dead are represented with the life of these tulips. Led by bagpipers, shoulder to shoulder, the crowd of hundreds marches through downtown Binghamton. Just to pray along the way as we walk from the courthouse to this park. Family members carry their tulips along the journey. Today is a day that we should not fear. We should be strong as a community. Converging here at Confluence Park, religious leaders speak of having faith in the future. If we respond right way, we can overcome this evil. We can build a stronger community. People really showed how much they cared, and we all stood together as a community. Standing together and taking time to plant hope at this corner of Confluence Park. She was from China. She was a student of mine, and she was just ready to celebrate her first anniversary. A senseless rash of violence stole their lives, but the memory of the victims and to the gunmen will live on, represented by these tulips in Confluence Park. In Binghamton, Eric Burling, WBNG-TV, Action News. The memorial march was organized by Broome County Council of Churches. There have been many services since this senseless tragedy. They began with a prayer service the night of the shootings here at the First Congregational Church in Binghamton, just a few steps from the Civic Association. Most were shocked that something like this could happen so close to home. Reverend Arthur Sugg says his job is to create spiritual healing for those who are wounded. He was glad that these people will not let fear take over their lives in tragedy. The community came together for an act of healing and remembrance the next night on Saturday. Candles were lit at Confluence Park. Community peace groups spoke out, expressing sympathy for all those affected. Jim Clune of Broome County Peace Action wants people to become active and supportive in any way possible. Also last weekend, an interfaith memorial service held at West Middle School in Binghamton. Several areas religious leaders organized the prayer service. About a thousand people turned out, joining together as one community. Fourteen wreaths were placed on a stage to symbolize each person who died. Those who attended say this helps begin the healing process. The First Assembly of God held a prayer vigil to honor the victims this week. Fourteen candles were lit, each one for those who died. Religious leaders led the congregation in prayer and emphasized the community would not be defined by the tragedy, but their response to it. At a time like this, uh, I don't, to my knowledge, nothing in the history of this community has been this tragic. And so it's great to see what God can do as we all uh, reach out to Him and to each other. And no one has been affected by this tragedy more than the American Civic Association itself. We'll focus on that agency next. And a memorial at the site is growing by the day, a gentle reminder of what happened inside.
It's a message of grief and resilience from the American Civic Association. Angela Leach, board president, says this tragedy should never have happened. The Civic Association is a small volunteer agency. It was founded in 1939 by immigrants who wanted to help those who came after them. Although the pain is unbearable, Leach said it doesn't deter them from their mission. Whatever drove this individual to do what he did, I cannot possibly fathom. But we will come out of our grief and sadness more resolute in our mission and more dedicated than ever to help people realize the dream of American citizenship. The Civic Associations expressed its gratitude to law enforcement and the community for providing support during this time of need. Action News asked a representative from the Civic Association to be with us tonight, but they respectfully declined. That tragedy still too fresh, too emotional to talk about for the organization. A familiar face was on the scene during last week's attack on the ACA. Fred Trzinski served as the center's executive director for close to eight years. He left his post last year and now serves as executive director of Tioga County United Way. Trzinski says he helped law enforcement understand the layout of the building while people were still inside. He says the outpouring of support has been incredible to witness. If there's anything good coming of this, you would not, you cannot imagine how many folks, uh, federal, state, local, friends, family calling, saying, what can we do to help you, you know, so which is beautiful. Trzinski also has plans to assist the ACA to keep track of its finances and pay bills in the coming weeks. He says he does not know when the center will reopen or what kind of memorial could be built to honor the victims. A makeshift memorial is growing at the American Civic Association. People are stopping by, dropping off flowers, balloons, crosses, and other mementos. They're resting gently under the sign of the ACA, reminding us to never forget those who died. It helps shift the focus from the violence of the shootings to remembering the victims. You too are encouraged to bring flowers to the memorial site, a simple but powerful way of remembering. There's a lot of help available to deal with the tragedy, and not just for the victims and their families. The doors open to anyone who needs comfort in this time of need. We'll have that and much more coming up.